Well, this does appear to be the vindication portion of the program here, Carl. This is a giant vindication for, you know, those of us who have been sort of doing the work that the journal journalists of of the past days have sort of, they're, they're now sort of guilty of uh, media malpractice, uh, a phrase we've thrown around quite often. But this, this what we're going to talk about now, uh, really does uh, confirm the media malpractice accusation that uh, we and others have been launching against, you know, the, the alphabet uh, media corporations out there, because this video has now surfaced of one Naomi Wolf uh, giving a talk and doing a Q&A at the 2014 Free State Project Liberty Forum, right? right. And uh, Naomi Wolf, who is she? She's a writer and a political consultant who worked on two presidential campaigns. So, you know, th- these aren't dog catcher campaigns. This is the highest office in the land. She was in the meat, the thick of it all, uh, including Clinton Gore's campaign. Okay, so she's a liberal, a feminist, and, and she is, well, why should we quote her? Because she is an insider. She's an insider. She yeah. knows what's going on here. And uh, during the Q&A, she's asked about the Boston bombing and how it looked like it was an attempt at martial law. What do you think of what happened in Boston? When we were looking oh, for a pressure cooker and two teenagers, you know, and then they took over the whole city and shut it down. And to me, that looked a whole lot like martial law. And how it looked like it was an attempt at martial law. Her answer is going to shock your audience because <clears throat> it will, um, and it, she's essentially saying what you and I, Brandon, and, and several guests that you've had on your show and I've had on my show, these guests have all been saying this for many years and have, have been lambasted and vilified for saying it. But here we have have a a Washington insider saying what we have been saying. Here we go. So I sort of uh, taken the highlights from the video. I'm not going to quote it word for word, although these, what I say, she says, I have uh, transcribed her words. What I say, she said, she said, okay? And we, like you said, we posted the video to the the Freedom Friday Facebook page. You can confirm this for yourself, folks. Uh, she, She leads with, Okay, now she's answering a question about the Boston bombing. Always keep that in mind here, folks. She says the State Department intelligence agencies engage in theater. They create spectacles and events that people may not realize are spectacles and events, like, you know, when they overthrew Iran's uh, Mossadegh in the 50s, and, you know, they funnel money to protesters, and they fly people in to infiltrate protests, and she said they create fake newspapers. What? and so on and so on. Then she says that she believes that a law has been passed in the U.S. that makes it legal to propagandize American citizens, and she couldn't remember the law details during her answer to the question about the Boston bombing, you know, but she says that she remembered it was part of the NDAA. After the break, we're going to talk about that because I did all the research on that for you guys today uh, for her also. Okay, but I'm good. Sure she, she, she's probably up on that now. And you and, but, and, uh, and let me just... Bro- so, all over the world, we know... It's well established. Uh, the State Department intelligence agencies engage in theater, and it's what they do, it's spycraft, to create um, spectacles and events that people may not realize are spectacles and events, but that, well, like the, um, the overthrow of Mossadegh in the 50s in Iran. Uh, it, they, they'll funnel money to protesters, they'll, you know, fly people in to infiltrate protesters, they'll create fake newspapers, and so on. So we know that this happens in countries around the world. I believe that a law has been passed in the United States, I think it's part of the Defense Authorization Act, I need to confirm this, that, pardon me, now makes it legal to propagandize American citizens. Is that, do we know about that? Yeah, it's true. And is it in the NDAA or is it in something else? Do we know? It's a separate bill. It's a separate bill. And it's been passed. It's now law? Do we know what the name Two years ago. Do we know what the name of it is? I don't remember, but I reported on it. Oh, thank you. Will you send me the link? Yeah. Thank you. And, and let me just break in. You and Brandon have reported on the NDAA in the right. past, so that's going to just dovetail right. in. But let me just remind our listeners, everything you're saying is shocking, but our listeners, folks, if you will go, to freedomfriday.carlgallops on Facebook, freedomfriday.carlgallops. We've posted this video. You can watch it. It's only four or five minutes long. And it's Naomi Wolf 
who who is an author, a journalist, and the former political advisors to Al, advisor to Al Gore and Bill Clinton. I mean, a dyed-in-the-wool Democrat who's admitting the government is involved in fakery and hoaxes. And they right. have been since 2012 in a big way. They've actually passed laws that allow them to do this. This is a Democrat saying it. All right, go ahead, Mike. Right, a true insider. And she goes on to say that, that, um, that uh, she says, quote, we have entered an era in which it is not crazy to assess news events Thank to you. see if they are to see if they are real Thank you. or not real. Thank you. In the United in the United States as well as overseas. Thanks. And then she says, in fact, it's kind of crazy not to. Yeah, now now let me just stop. And I you know, as a journalist to say these words just I can't tell you with what a heavy heart I say them, but we've entered an era in which it is not crazy to assess news events to see if they're real or not real. And in the United States as well as overseas. And in fact, it's kind of crazy not to. Now that, vindic right. that vindicates 100% Freedom Friday. And you and me and Brandon Big B and, right. a, and a lot of the right. guests we have on. Right. Because for right. example, of course we all know the political reasons why they tried to trash me all over the uh, world media, literally from London to New York City and everywhere else, about uh, Sandy Hook. And they, they, and they titled their articles about me because I had endorsed Trump and it was coming to the Florida primaries and they were trying to discredit me to make Trump look stupid. And they put the title of pastor, uh, Trump supporting pastor is a Sandy Hook hoaxer. He thinks no one died at Sandy Hook. Well, I've never said that. Neither have you. Neither have right. we on Freedom Friday. But what have we said? We've said you need to question that government narrative. There are some things that stink to high heaven. That's all we've ever said. And the, and the liberals have challenged us even for asking questions. And now we've got Naomi Wolf, who is an advisor to Al Gore and Bill Clinton, saying, oh, no, that's exactly what they do. They do engage right. in hoaxes and staging of events. And, and what does she say? We'd be stupid not to question these crazy. events. Right, right, right. So who are the crazy ones, Carl? Yeah. The crazy ones, the crazy, only, the, only a very select few of us are not crazy. She says the crazy ones are the ones who refuse to uh, question these things, and not only question them, but don't stop questioning until you get the answer. Right. I mean, uh, Wolfgang Hallbig has been questioning Sandy Hook for years, right. and people have tried to run him off the road. Yep. You know, this man, his life is in jeopardy on a daily basis. He's practically bankrupted himself. Just please answer these questions. And it's they that won't. simple. That's but right. Nobody wants this. And you know what? He's the sane one, yes. according to this Washington insider. Yeah. He's and on conspiracies, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, he's an ex-Florida State Trooper. I mean, tell people who he is. Right. Wolfgang Holbrook is a, Sorry, is, yeah. is, is a former Florida uh, Highway Patrol officer, and uh, he's been investigating the Sandy Hook thing for years, using his law enforcement right. experience and training schools and law enforcement brains, and he's very disturbed by the government narrative of that, and he's asked tons of questions, and they've tried to yeah. label, label him as an idiot, and now, just yesterday, along comes this video with Naomi Wolf, a liberal advisor to the president who is saying yes the government does engage in these kinds of things and they do call us crazy for questioning them and you're crazy if you don't question them and she seemed to cringe when she when she said yes. you know if we question these things we're labeled conspiracy theorists and so yes. on yes. and she cringed when she said that because she said on conspiracies she says all over the world intelligence agencies are conspiring to create outcomes. And then she says that is their job. Yep. Their job is to conspire to create outcomes. You know, there's so much uh, hype about what I just said, and, and so I want to be very clear about it so it can't be taken out of context. <clears throat> you know, there's, <clears throat> pardon me, this kind of reflexive vilification of anyone speculating about that because they become a conspiracy theorist, right? Well, just bear with me. You know, I've often thought about this because our intelligence agencies, and for I respect spies, I mean, you know, who are doing, like before it got out of control, 
I believe we need intelligence. I believe we need intelligence agencies. I don't think there's anything dishonorable about being in the intelligence services if you obey the Constitution and the law. Um, but all over the world, our intelligence services are engaged in conspiring to create outcomes. That's their job. That's how they're successful. Their job is to conspire to create outcomes. And now, she says, it's legal to, propag to propagandize in the United States. And then she says this, Carl. This is amazing. She says, there seems to be, to her, to be more and more events in the news stream that seem to be subsidized by the government. She says, we need to be skeptical of what we see in the news stream. She says she is personally skeptical of news events which seem more theatrical than normal. So <clears throat> now that it's illegal to propagandize in the United States, uh, it doesn't surprise me that there's more and more um, products coming up in popular culture, more and more events in the news stream that seem to be, to my eye, to be subsidized. Uh, let me give you some examples of that. I'm not talking about Boston right now. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. We also talked earlier about infiltrators, right, and how they provoke violence. This is well established. So if we know that infiltrators by the police, NYPD, they've been documented, or other police forces, dress up like people they're not and provoke violence, why is it unthinkable that there might be spectacles that might drive an outcome in the news stream? Let me give you a couple of quick examples. And all I'm saying is we unfortunately, and I have to say this to my fellow journalists, journalists as well, we've entered a time in which we need to be very skeptical about the news stream and look at it critically and ask for more verification and more inquiry. And that's just being good reporters. And it makes it like this, there's spectacle fed into the news media in China. There's spectacle fed into, like Chile. How did Pinochet, you know, engage in his coup? He created uh, photographs of a cache of weapons that the terrorists had, you know, hidden. Was it real? Was it not? Most historians think it wasn't. I mean, this is like not unusual, you know, in the process of creating a closed society. So, if laws have made it legal to assassinate American citizens and legal to propagandize them, why should it be crazy or weird to think that that might be for a reason, right? All right. I saw the movie uh, Zero Dark Thirty, thank you very much. And I have worked on two presidential campaigns, so I recognize political talking points. And I wrote a piece saying, this reads like the Pentagon signed off on the script. Because there were like chunks of political talking points identifiable to anyone who's worked in Washington. Right? And you don't come up with those if you're a writer writing a screenplay. Um, and everyone was very upset. It was very controversial and scandalous. But in fact, belatedly, a news story came out saying that in fact the Pentagon had, I think, subsidized some of it, but had certainly consulted directly on the script. And I see more and more TV shows about the CIA and more and more TV shows about spies and gigantic blockbusters in which surveillance is normalized and gigantic blockbusters in which people are tortured to get them to talk in a way that might exonerate people who actually tortured people to get them to talk in Guantanamo. And there's all this money being pumped into these unaccountable, you know, terrorism fighting things. And now there's no law preventing that money from going through front organizations right into popular culture. So that's of interest to me. And so another thing I want to say, and there's so many people waiting to ask a question, but I just need to say this, is I'm skeptical of certain news events that seem more theatrical than the norm. Now that's an amazing thing, because people have pointed out the theatrical nature of some of these events, mm -hmm. and how, how Craigslist has ads that, that where they're looking for crisis actors, quote unquote. I've even captured some screen grabs of these ads. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a this is a real thing. And so, now remember now, this woman, <laughs> all she's doing is she's an advisor to the Clinton Gore campaign and in another U.S. campaign. I wasn't able to find out which one that was. A question about the Boston bombing. This is her answer. 
and she worked on two presidents. This is a Washington insider answering a question about Boston bombing, but she closes her answer on Boston by saying, there is no investigative journalism anymore. And she said, we need to investigate Boston more, interview actual people, etc. And then she says, finally, she says, to train citizens to be journalists. No one's verifying it. Journalists aren't in a position to follow up on anything anymore because budgets are slashed and there's no investigative reporting. Um, all this nonsense can enter the media stream for purposes that have to do with advancing agendas because no one's checking. That's all I want to say about that. Um, can I take more questions? I, so Boston, I, I guess my feeling about any of these things is let's investigate. We need to investigate. We need to ask better questions. We need to interview the doctors at the hospital. We need to interview the victims. We need to, you know, get all the footage ourselves. We need to train journalists, citizens to be journalists and to have websites. And I'm, I'm busy building one as a startup where citizen journalists can document events so that we're not leaving it to the gatekeepers. Yeah. And that's, that's the kind of people, Carl, when I look for people to interview on my program, I look for people who are citizens, who are, who are, who are jur citizen journalists, who are actually going to these places, like Newtown, Connecticut, etc., and actually talking to people, taking pictures, looking at signs, you know, uh, reading, reading the, um, you know, the, the reading whatever's going on in the air, you know, getting a feel of the place, actually being there. And, um, so to me, that is a real, that's real journalism. That's real journalism. If somebody goes to one of these places and says, I was there, I saw this, I saw that, hey, I'm calling you, we're doing an interview. I mean, that to yeah. me, that is real journalism. And, and she's saying that is finished. Therefore, uh, what she's saying is we have to question everything we see, and she even mentions CNN by name, by the way. Mm -hmm. She says she mentions CNN as an organization that is guilty of faking the news. By the way, she mentions the wow. and she's a liberal. She's a liberal Democrat. So basically, I think what do what does your audience? What should they do next, Carl? As soon as the show is over, I think what all, everyone who's listening. I did this 15 years ago. You might know where I'm going with this. Call your cable provider and cancel your cable subscription. <laughs> Get rid of that because what are they doing? They are funneling fake news into your house, terrorizing you terrorizing your children yeah. because much of what this woman says much of what you see is all fabricated and it is being sponsored by the state department yep. do what 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 did uh, what did eric holder say back in 1995 to brainwash people we need we need to brainwash people into thinking differently about guns. Yep. He said, even if we have to brainwash them. So the person we're talking right. about, listen, Mike, we're going to have to take a time out. We'll come back and finish this up, plus a whole lot more. But the person we're talking about is Naomi R. Wolf. You can go check her out on the Internet. She's an American author, a journalist, a former political advisor to Al Gore, to Bill Clinton. And this video was posted yesterday. Naomi Wolf. The government stages events to sway public opinion, and it's been legal since 2012. That's the title of the video. You can see it at freedomfriday.carl gallops. It is a shocking admission of what we've been saying on Freedom Friday for years and being called all sorts of names for. Now we have been vindicated. You got to go see this video. Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops on Facebook. Let's take this time out. We'll come back with more. Mike Shoesmith, welcome to the Oval Office of Gulf Coast Talk Radio. All right, Mike, we've only got a few moments, so I'm going to hush and turn it over to you because you've got a lot more to say in wrapping up this story of Naomi Wolf and this video that was posted yesterday admitting the government engages by law passed in 2012 in right. staging events to sway public opinion. It's entirely legal in the United States, and she tells us we should question everything we see, and she's a liberal. Talk about it. Well, you think that name is someone to be trusted. Wait till you hear these names. Uh, the business law uh, that was passed making it legal to propagandize U.S. citizens on U.S. soil. Here is the law, Business Insider reported back in July 2013, that the U.S. government, this is shocking, folks, absolutely shocking, the U.S. government's mammoth broadcasting arm has begun the, quote, unleashing of thousands of hours per week of government-funded radio and TV programs for domestic U.S. consumption, John Hudson of Foreign Policy reported on Sunday. The content arrives with the enactment of the Smith Modernization Act of 2012. So there's the law. 
It was passed in 2012. The Smith Month Modernization Act of 2012, sponsored by Representative Max Thornberry, who, by the way, is a Republican, disappointingly, and uh, Representative Adam Smith of uh, Washington. He's a Democrat, so it was a co-sponsored bill, which was inserted into the 2013 NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the audience will be familiar with that. The reform effectively nullifies the smith Munt Act of 1948, okay? And that act made it illegal to propagandize U.S. citizens. So this is that act modernized. That's what that is, right? Uh, in 2012, Business Insider also reported, okay, now here comes the names. Lieutenant Colonel uh, Daniel Davis, who was a highly respected officer who released a critical report regarding the, get this now, this guy wrote a report regarding the distortion of truth, Carl. This was this guy's report called The Distortion of Truth by Senior Military Officials in Iraq and Afghanistan. What? Wait a minute. A report about the distortion of truth? Yes. Stated that the effective repeal of Smith Munt is a strategic move in influencing U.S. public perception in regards to. So it's all an attempt to influence U.S. public perception, right? Right. I see I'm running out of time here, so I'm going to cut this back a little bit. So then we introduce this guy named, uh, he's a general, Ralph O. Baker. And he goes on to equate descriptions of combat operations with the standard marketing strategy of repeating something until it's accepted. Mm -hmm. And for years, uh, you know, he says that commercial advertisers have based their advertisement strategies on the premise that there is a positive correlation between the number of times a consumer is exposed to something and then their inclination to accept it, right? So they just keep hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And he says the very same principle applies to how we influence our target audiences. And we'll close with this. Uh, the Baker strategy states, quote, repetition is a key tenet of information operation execution. And listen to this. The failure to constantly drive home a consistent message dilutes the impact on the target audiences. Wow. So wow. basically... That that whole um, that whole act, the Smith Munt Modernization Act, is designed to allow the government to propagandize the American people to bring home a message, just like Eric Holder's message: brainwash the people to give up their guns. Absolutely, That's it. That's it. Mike Shoe Smith. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You can reach him at PP Simmons at net. No, 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 no. What is it? What is it, Mike? PP Simmons at live.com. Yeah, there you go. There you go. PP Simmons at live.com. PP Simmons at live.com. In the meantime, you can check out this video we've been talking about, Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops at Facebook, Freedom Friday. Carl Gallops. We'll be back in a moment with Zach Drew, co host of The Jim Baker Show. You don't want to miss that.